Welcome to another edition of 42 Straight Years In. On my crackhead update, uh, yesterday, which was Sunday, I went over to the neighborhood, Walmart neighborhood store, and there was a young, pretty white chick standing outside trying to panhandle. And the neighborhood market is right there in up Uptown. Right? People there got money. The rent is sky high. And uh, security came and ran her off. And uh, one lady, as the security guard said, why are you messing with that lady? She said, we don't allow the homeless hang out here and panhandle the customers. She said, how do you know she's homeless? I mean, it was it was brisky outside. She had on some jeans, but she had the jeans tucked in her socks and some tennis shoes on. And her hair was kind of disheveled, but she was a pretty young chick. And you can look at the way she's dressed, and it was cold outside. Well, it wasn't cold, but it, it's cold by uh, Dallas standards. When it gets uh, 40 and 30 here, that is cold to a person living in Dallas. And he said that's what he judged on by her dress. Because the lady looked like she was offended because there was a female that he was running off. Well, they don't allow no hanging out there. And you can hang out if you're waiting on a, a ride. They can basically look at the people and tell who the customers are. And uh, most of these young, pretty chicks that are out here on the streets, majority of them got a drug habit. They hustling for drugs. They sell sex. Just to get high and to get a motel room, uh, couch surf somewhere, or he'll just sleep on the streets, sleep on the bridge somewhere or, or behind a building. They got spots where they hide out and sleep, keep from getting ran off by the cops. That's my crackhead update. Y'all know what it is. Get your shanks out and let's ride. Yeah, my Patreon took off yesterday with a blast, man. We had a good time on Patreon. I wild out. I absolutely went stock raving mad on Patreon. And y'all subscribe to my, uh, become a patron. Uh, the link will be in the description. Uh, I want to speak on today, uh, the 80-20 rule. In a lot of situations and circumstances, the 80-20 rule apply. Uh, you go in an inner city neighborhood, it's basically a major op type neighborhood where all the heads of households are females. You, you go to the prison system, 80% of the old guys come from single parent households. And you can go you can go over there and, and, and you know I can just go here in the projects here in East Dallas and just look at the old kids, how wild they are. Totally disrespectful, wild, loud, just like these stupid ass parents. The apple don't fall too far from the tree. If they don't receive guidance at home, they sure ain't gonna receive it in the streets. All that's waiting on you in the streets is a jail cell or the mall. Uh, I can go in uptown and look at kids. You don't see kids running all over the place over there. You don't see that. It's kids that live there because they got family units. But you don't see kids all walking the street, all out in the traffic. You don't see that. And, uh, majority of the young guys you can talk to them until you turn into an albino. They not going to listen because they can't experience that. I can deal with a convicted felon. I, well, I can put myself in a maximum security prison and talk with a guy who's in prison. Well, the same prison clothes I wear. He got on the Texas uh, prison whites. Because everybody in Texas prison wear white clothes. But I could not explain to him how the inmate guard system work. That is totally far-fetched to him. 
he look around, he see little young college student females and males who are the guards. And they actually got to beg these guys to get them to do something. Hey guys, come on off of the, the come on off of the run. Don't be hanging around on the run. If you're not going in your cell, come on back down in the day room. You got to beg these guys to do that. And some of them will just say, to hell with you. Come up here and make me come down. By his action, that's what he's saying more or less. Whereas, if an inmate guard was saying, hey, y'all come off that run. You wouldn't even glance at this guy. You wouldn't look him in his eyes. You wouldn't do none of that because you know what time it is. He going to beat the brakes off of you. He ain't going to sit and color you and babysit you because he got the green light from the prison administration to brutalize you at his whim with no consequences whatsoever. I'll be trying to show them the difference. They don't want to hear that. They can't visualize it because they never lived under that type of system. When they come to prison, the guards are saying, gentlemen, sir, mister. They're not using a... a racial terminology when they talk to you in their speech, they're not doing that. They would do something like that, they'd get fired. Guarantee you'll be fired. Same day, they wouldn't even waste no time playing with you. You know, uh, and I hear the same thing. These young guys, don't, they, uh, they don't respect you. They don't, I see a lot of young guys, they look at an older guy with total hate in the eyes. I don't know why a guy never did anything to him. Maybe you got on, like me, I like to wear Jordans. And I got about six pair of them. I got three pair of them that is expensive. I, a lot of time I'll be at Walmart to be somewhere, I'll, I'll watch a young guy, he'll size me up. Uh, I was at uh, Walmart out by Luke 12, and a young Hispanic chick, she told her boyfriend, she said, those are the kind of Jordans you need to get. He looked at me, then he looked at my shoes, and I got on jewelry, and, and I'm, I'm a hat man. I, I, I didn't see nothing nice in his eyes. He was saying, man, I don't probably, he probably didn't even have a job. Or if he did, he's making seven, eight bucks an hour. He can't afford to buy no uh, $250 pair of Jordans. He can't afford that. He didn't give me a friendly look. I said, man, this is just total hate. When he can get do the same thing that I do, he can get him some money and live his life instead of walking around thinking he's cute. Uh, you hear a lot of females, I see that on a lot of dating sites. I go on there just for the social content, just to see what the general population, how they think, because I got to deal with these people every day. And all these females talk about they trying to get the bag. They're always at the end of every sentence uh, in their profile. I'm about my, my money. Or they got dollar signs up. Some of these women look like busted Pillberry uh, biscuit cans. If a woman on a sexual market value scale, if she was an 8, 9, or 10, she can get a guy who got some money. Just watch. Majority of the entertainers, the professional athletes, a lot of these rappers, they do not have an ugly female. A female look good. She may not stay with this guy. They probably have a lot of conflicts, but he got a good looking old lady. It's rare you see these guys with an ugly chick. If attractiveness is what a man judge a woman by, and a man judge himself by wealth, not by physical look. You don't see a man getting up trying to put makeup on his face. I imagine he could do it and change his whole looks just like the females do. When they take that ton of makeup off and some of them with the fake hair, that's a totally different person. That's not who you was talking to. You have an alien in your house. That is not the same female with these long fake nails. They don't even look real. You can look at that and say, man, I'd be watching some of them trying to pick something up, uh, find stuff on their phone. They have a hard time doing it with these long nails. I'd be looking, I'd say, now what's supposed to, what, you know, that don't make you look beautiful. And if people will say, well, beauty is only skin deep. But people are judged on the attractiveness. Look at a professional 
sport team. Look at the cheerleaders. They do not have pure berry biscuit doughboy looking women out there as cheerleaders. All those chicks are attractive. Every one of them. They don't have an ugly chick. They don't have a fat chick. They don't have a bad milk turkey leg looking chick. They don't have none of that. And a lot of times, you, you can go to a church. 80% of the women, the congregation going to be females. 80% will be females. To them, that's a social gathering. After she done rolled the, the D carousel, and she no longer enjoy that, now she turned to religion. So religious. I talked to a lady that lived here with me, but she just wanted to start a conversation. I was standing out on my patio smoking a cigarette and her car is parked right by the patio. And she said, hey, she always speak to me every morning. Hey, good morning. I returned. Good morning. And uh, she walked over and said, hey, uh, I see you standing out here uh, every morning drinking a cup of coffee, smoking a cigarette. She said, uh, I know you got a job to go to. I didn't respond to that. And uh, the conversation went on and on. She trying to pry into my business, asking me all these personal questions. And I told her, I said, I tell you what, every question you asking me, you provide the answer for it. And then I'll answer the question. She said, oh, I don't answer questions for men. I said, I don't ask, answer questions for women. What are you trying to do? Interrogate me? What are you with the IRS or somebody? FBI? Dallas police officer? I said, we got Dallas police officer here for security. They're not asking me all these personal questions. Why are you? She said, oh, uh, I imagine you have a hard time getting the old lady with your attitude. I said, contrary to what you may believe, I got one. I said, you know what? I'm twice her age and she young and she pretty. I said, she pretty. She ain't a, a peel berry biscuit dough boy looking woman. This is a pretty woman. She ain't got to put all that makeup on. She ain't got to do all that. She got a natural pretty face. She ain't got to do that. And she go to the gym and work out three times a week. I'm talking about she's be there about four hours working out. I said, uh, she said, well, I don't see her. I said, well, she went shopping. I said, stop by here sometime. She'll be here. I say, oh, when you park, look over here sometimes. She's standing on the patio with me. Well, I don't believe that. So I politely had to curse her out. I think I messed up her whole day because I went 90 south on her. And this lady really, my mind is on something else. I was thinking about content that I'm going to use on the video or uh, answering subscribers. All that stuff was on my mind. And uh, I mean, I ain't trying to hear nothing you talking about. Stop asking me all these personal questions. After you no longer ride the carousel, now you're such a changed and outstanding person. But you did all these things in the past. And it no longer appealed to you. Or physically, you can no longer do it because the cat don't work well no more. You ain't got the whop. In your mind, you still got it. But you do not have the whop. So... Now, you done turn religious all of a sudden. You know what? Uh, and a lot of guys getting out of prison, majority do not have anything. And if you served all your time, you really up shit creek because they do not provide housing for you. Now, if you're on parole, they provide housing. They're not going to release you to the streets. You've got to have an address. If you don't have an address, they got halfway houses that you can go to, that you won't have to live on the streets. But, it, you know, if you have a foundation, you can easily build yourself back up. But you've been incarcerated 10, 15, 20, 35 years. You no longer have a foundation, especially if you no longer have a family on the outside or your family won't help you out. I've seen some guys get out. They say, no, I'm not going to my family. That ain't going to work. That's going to get me right back in prison. He said, hey, my worst enemy is my family. Now, you take, uh, take Donald Trump, take all his wealth from him, and throw him over in Bunton here in, over in South Dallas, over in the housing projects. 
And let me see you make it from there. No context, no nothing. Let me see you come up. Let me see you survive. It ain't, it's not easy. It all starts with the individual. And that'll show you how much fortitude you got. Only the strong gonna survive. Everybody not gonna make it. It's the same way in the prison. Some guys gonna lose their mind there. Some guys gonna commit suicide. Uh, some gonna have cancer. Some HIV. Some a combination of all of that. A lot of them not gonna make it. If it's you sent us to life, and that's with parole eligibility, you still is a walking dead man because you at the mercy of the parole board. Your first problem is living long enough to get interviewed by a parole officer. That's problem number one. The second one is when are the parole board going to decide to release you? And if you have life without parole, it's basically a wrap for you. But I don't see no time soon in the state of Texas where they'll ever change that law. Eventually, they probably get rid of the death penalty and just use life without parole. No possibility of parole. So in essence, you just as dead as the guys on death row, except you live in general population. And you got more privileges than death row guys got. That's the difference in it. Other than that, you just as dead as they are. Uh, Y'all go and uh, check my Patreon out. Because I can get raw and uncut over there. I can't do that on this channel. And my content on Patreon is totally different than what I'm serving you now. Uh, I got to take a trip over to Oak Cliff today and visit some buddies. And I got a partner at the Mark Styles unit. And uh, he's been locked up. He just had a birthday a couple days ago. He's 45 years old now. Been locked up since he was 20. For a crime that he didn't commit. Now I'm trying to get this guy help. Because he's actually innocent. You know. He don't have no outside help at all. No family. Nobody. He on his own. You know. I'm going to try to drum up support. And get these law schools. Or get an attorney. To help this guy out. You know. If anybody's interested. In assisting this guy. Just hit me up in the comment section. And I got all these court documents right here. Uh, sitting about five feet away from me. All right, I'm going to wrap this up. Y'all keep your shanks ready. Because we might have to move on these fools. Uh, they get their checks tonight at midnight. And all hell going to break loose. The crackhead is going to be out roving. They're going to be high. The meth head's going to be walking around, walking all over the place, riding these bicycles, fast as hell, running out in front of your car. So y'all be ready for these clowns. So check day is 12 o'clock midnight. They're going to be at the ATM machine about 1 o'clock withdrawing money. Y'all like and subscribe, and I thank you for watching.